object here is to take the guts out of the GT2B. We're going to modify them a little bit and get them all to fit inside of this little controller shell here. This is uh, printed by Tito. He, this is one of the best mods that I've seen out there as far as um, things that we've used and we've been using this system for five years. Anyways, you're going to need uh, you're going to need some of these tools that we have in front of us. Um, pretty basic stuff. If you're into this stuff, you should have most of the stuff sitting around, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But anyways, uh, we'll get started by tearing this guy down, taking all the guts out of it. So this guy here is going to be your battery wire and we're just going to end up using the red and the black and we take the white one here we're just going to peel it back and cut it what this white wire is is it's a third channel toggle in if you do end up wanting to run that third channel on something else um, Pretty much it's this little button down here and the switch on the back side. Uh, if you want to run a third channel for something, whether you're using it to turn on and off lights or heck, who knows. But uh, with the race board stuff, we don't run any of that, so we just chop that short and leave it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, DC, the red's going to be the hot wire and the black's going to be the... Uh, the ground or the negative. Now as far as uh, this guy here, we'll go ahead and disassemble it the rest of the way. These two screws that are in here, little short guys, you're going to want to keep those for the inside of the of the, uh, the mod housing. There's two little spots inside here those little short screws are going to go to. It's good to uh, keep this plate um, there's two toggles in here. There's a throttle trim and a steering trim. And then there's, there's a uh, forward and backwards. And it's kind of, kind of hard to figure out which one's which once you get this all apart. So you can use, this is a reference here as far as what the, what the, uh, the toggle switches are here. So basically in order for this to fit inside of here, We'll just kind of lay it down there for you. You can see that we're going to need to trim right along here. Now if you're looking at this, there's a circuit board. There's print here that runs right inside of here. And then you've got some hardware in here and we're going to cut outside of all this and take that out. What I've got, what I like to use are these uh this little horseshoe style pliers here and you just come in here line it up clip it the same with this okay so you see we got some rough some rough spots here and uh, what i like to do with that is just bring in a little emery cloth and we'll just take and take and clean that up a little bit just smooths it down, gets some kind of uniform. Don't want to go too far in. You can see the circuits on the back side here. Okay. Now on the back side here, you can see there's a lot of um, the solder joints in the back that are sticking out. Uh, we'll get back to these after a little bit. I found that some of these uh, probably depending on where and when they are made are sticking out a lot farther than they should be so um, but we'll get back to that and see how the see how it all fits in there 
So the next thing we're going to do is clear this stuff off here. We're going to come in here and do the lithium battery. So it's a single cell uh, lithium battery and it um, we're going to take the, the outer husk of this thing off. Let's see if I can get this rolling here. So we got our uh, our battery all hooked up here, and it turns out that the uh, this would be like the uh, battery management system for a single cell. It's a dud right out of the box. There's no voltage coming out of there. If you come over here, go to both sides of the battery, you can see it's got juice in it, but uh, there is nobody home here. So we're going to go ahead and go to um, go to a backup plan here. I have an older one here that we had soldered up on another setup. And you can see we got voltage right outside there. So we're going to go ahead and finish up using this one. Make sure that the voltages are right on here that we hook the leads up to the proper place if you take the battery negative sign here follow the circuit board up here it ends up landing landing on that pad so we'll check that out real quick sure enough this is the negative this is the positive so we'll take these leads we'll strip the ends off them So we have a little bit of a uh, little bit exposed there. We'll go ahead and heat up our uh, solder and iron here. A little bit of solder paste doesn't hurt. Or flux. But you want to uh, land a little bit of solder on the ends. Of these and land a little bit of solder on the uh, pads before before you land it I'm gonna take these and run these out the top After we got our lead soldered on there, we're going to take and run these out the side. And we're just going to electrical tape. And we laid the, the BMS down flat on this, as flat as we can. So it's about the same thickness as the, uh, as the battery there. The battery in our case is going to lay down here like this and it just pops in there and lays in there nice and flat. Got the lead coming out this little hole here in the side, this little area. Now for the trigger. So the trigger is too large to fit in this spot. We've got to trim this part off and we've got to trim this back side off. So back to these guys again here. You can come right in here. Give it a trim there. And 
and trim there and I like to take the edges and just corner them off a little bit then also on this circuit board here this dead area right here where there's no circuits we're gonna take that off as well so you want to come right up to the circuit right up to the edge of it give her a chop like I like to come back to this again and just smooth it down a little bit they've left us a really nice spot for the circuit board to drop in and a really nice spot for the potentiometer to drop in and the uh, the wiring what I like to do is it roots really nice underneath and this thing fits in like a glove you want to make sure that there isn't any binding happening with it you see we drop the wire right down here in this nice little pocket and it's gonna take and turn the corner right here and come right beside the battery and underneath just make sure that nothing's binding up so. so on the main circuit here you just want to kind of drop it in place and see what uh, see how it fits on top you want to make sure that that this end of it is able to drop in and made up you want to look look on the back side here and see if you have those long uh, posts sticking up that I was talking about uh, there is that protective cover uh, the hard plastic on the back end of the uh, the battery so you really don't have to worry about it cutting through or anything but um, you want to make sure that it does drop in there nice and and do what it's supposed to so as far as the uh, as far as the antenna it has this looks like a copper bell on there uh, what I like to do is just take and, and tape it and reason being uh, this is gonna float down here in the bottom you don't want it coming up and getting across any any part of the circuit board um, so we just cover this bell up with a little bit of little bit of tape here doesn't have to be doesn't have to be super uh, super sanitary okay so we're gonna drop this in we're gonna grab those two little short screws okay so the throttle is this first pin socket here it's just gonna rotate over and drop in there and this lead you want to make sure that this lead is not here on the outside so right here we're gonna jump it back up on top We're going to help it in there. And the battery is going to plug right back in the battery slot. And you want to check, make sure your work is good. Turn stuff on. Okay. And then the uh, wiring you can go ahead and tuck down inside.
you go to drop your outside case on you're going to want to take your uh, antenna and put it in a spot um, Tito is nice enough to put a little hole out the bottom of this um, I think it was intended for a lanyard and not the actual antenna to come out but uh, what I do with the antenna is I just take and wrap it around and there's plenty of room on the other side for it to lay in there and just kind of try and make it fit where you can and as you walk this this around you want to make sure that it uh, it closes up nice on all corners like it's supposed to and then you can go ahead and run the run the screws down everything's done and tight you want to make sure that you have no rubbing on this it should have nice clearance on both sides of this so that the trigger doesn't have any obstructions um, also, want to make sure it still comes on and lights up. And then you want to take it over and plug in your charge port. And that little green light will come on, or the little red light will come on. And then when it gets to be fully charged, the light will turn green inside. If you have to reverse your throttle, you've got to take it all apart and then switch it inside. This little guy in here is the switch for when you go to bind your remote. You've got to hold it down and then turn it on and the light will blink. That's the access hole for that. Um, your trim function. You save this so you can kind of come around and check on it and see. This is where the power switch would be. So this down here would be steering trim so you wouldn't use that. This one is your throttle trim. You can get a little flat tip screwdriver in there and adjust your throttle trim if you need to. It's a pretty pretty nice little setup. It's real sanitary, and uh, the GT2B's been working for us for a long time.